You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We got the emergency live stream. All right. We are talking about uh, Dave Hickey, athletic director at the University of Arizona, has been let go. Um, I don't, obviously, this is kind of devastating for me. I, I think a great deal of Dave. Um, this uh, also, I have a lot of questions here. I think we probably have a little bit of an idea. By the way, the hat is still missing, so I've not been able to find it. Um, this is bizarre, though. You don't fire an AD, or you don't plan on firing an AD and have him hire the coach first. That's stupid. You want to go through the timeline a little bit? of just? I mean, I don't care. I'll tell you how the first time he got wind of it and stuff. Is that cool? Yep. Yep. You tell so, you do it. When when he was actually when the coaching search was happening, I actually called Mike because I had heard from a few people and they were telling us me basically that there's a good chance Dave was gonna get fired. I didn't think it was gonna happen this week. From what I understand, Robbins hired an outside person to run an audit basically on everything. The results will be re- released, maybe even tomorrow. I don't know. But the results will be released. There's overspending the entire university, as we know. The AD was another department that overspent. The academics are mad at athletics, et cetera, et cetera. Dave Hickey's going to take the fall for the overspending in the AD. All right. So I guess my question is, why? at, at what point then, first of all, there was overspending in a lot of different st- areas because of, the, uh, because of COVID, because of all of that stuff. But at the same time, though, you got to spend money. Again, my whole thing that I'm going to keep coming back to is if you're going to fire the AD, fine. You don't, you don't have him hire the coach and then fire him. This is bizarre. This is the worst PR possible after a, basically the save of the century. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, this to me tells me that Robbins had already made this decision before the hire. That's my gut that basically, and notice again, I, I know he had COVID. I'm not saying he did it, but Robbins is nowhere to be found through any of this. His quote, even on the release, was like non-existent. I, I just, it, this is his way to separate himself from all this. And I, and I just tweeted, and I wholeheartedly believe it. No one is safe. Now, I'm not talking about coaches. Coaches are safe, but I'm talking about if you're an admin of any sort, your your ass is on the line, basically. Right. And I think the thing that's super, fr- like I said, I'm, I'm just gonna listen. I'm, I'm gonna keep coming back to this as well. Is that at some point then? At what point then does Robin's head fall? Everybody else's head's falling. Robin's head isn't falling. Um, at some point, when does this happen then? I think we're headed in that direction, right? Like this feels like, uh, uh, I don't know if you're a Game of Thrones dude, but this feels like the Red Wedding, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. People, I know the reference. People are going to go. And I think eventually, you know, Robin's is killing all these people off to try to save himself, but eventually it's going to lead to him. I, I just don't see how it does it. If there's overspending in the AD, Let's say Dave is slightly at fault. Let's just let's just say he yeah, is. Yeah, let's say he's slightly at fault. Cool. Right? At the end of the day, you're still the president of the university, and that's yet another department that spent poorly and incorrectly. That falls on you as the president. Right. Saul Bookman has joined us. Hello, Saul Bookman. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Yeah, not too – yeah, it's, uh, I was going to say. This, uh, Never told me that you covered U of A, man. Never. Arizona with the killer PR as usual. What's going – what's on your mind, big boss dog? I'm just stunned. Like again, like you guys have already addressed it. How do you make? How do you let them make this hire, and let them go through this whole ordeal for the last week and a half, and then fire them? Like I, I'm just stunned. I, I don't. It's like every single day is just a new way to tell people how do you fuck up a good thing one on one. I don't get it. And and it just continue again. Like at some point, then you got the save of the century right here. And let's just say, what do you got here? McMurphy just tweeted his source, which we all know who it is. Yeah. I told you, remember I just said they're going to bury him? Yeah. Already started. Dave Hickey was fired for financial and operational mismanagement, resulting in an athletic department financial disaster, loss of major donors, and mishandling of Jed Fish's contract. They're going to absolutely bury Dave. So is this really, is this, it sounds like, okay, you tell me if I'm wrong, Jason, it sounds like Robin's buddy, Fish, didn't get what he wanted or somehow, some way they let him go. And this is going to be the scapegoat in addition to the financial problems that the school is having. Yeah. Look, I love Dave, but the boosters were pissed by everything lately. I mean, they were pissed by the Jed thing. They were pissed at Jed. They were pissed at Dave. They're pissed at some coaches. Like, like they're not. And, and so, yeah, like at the end of the, who do you fire? If you're Robbins, Pete, there's probably pressure to fire someone in, in Dave's 
the easy target. But Robbins, yeah. been, but we all know that Robbins was fully aware of those Jetfish contract negotiations. Well, that's that's the other thing. I'm not going to I'm not going to let that I'm not going to let that one slide because I got a pretty I mean again, I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm not going to let that one slide. Robbins was intimately involved with those contract negotiations. The uh the allowing Jetfish to uh, go whatever. Jetfish Arizona could never match that contract ever. They just couldn't. There's just no way that they could match that contract. And then the fact is too then after that, you say, okay, well, I'm going to fire this guy. But guess what? I'm going to put him in charge for the next, what, week to make the biggest hire in football for the next, what, I don't know, five, ten years? None of this n- none of this makes any sense whatsoever. And this is, uh, quite frankly. It does, though, Mike. It does. Because now, if that Brennan hire goes wrong, Robin's hands are washed of it. It's not, if, 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 he, if he loses. Right, and if Brendan doesn't do it, Robbins could say, "Well, I let Dave make that hire, and Dave fired." That's this was planned from the beginning. This that's the real reason why we didn't see Robbins. Yeah, I, but again, at some point, then then his ass needs to be gone. You yeah, can't just yeah. Keep firing. You just can't keep firing people under you. And whether that's the AD, whether that's the head of the uh, the financial department, whatever the case may be, at some point. You've got to be able, and again, I think the thing with, the, I think the thing, the reason that I like Dave was just, Dave's just a good dude. Again, I'm not saying that he's perfect, but Dave's a good dude. Dave was always the one, even if it wasn't somebody that he hired, Dave was always the one that would take the blame. And he, and when there was a good hire, he was nowhere to be found. And it was Robbins that would be at the front row. This is, this, this, this is, this is. I'll say this man. too. Like. Even if you don't, like, I, I was hard on Dave. We all know this. I killed Dave at the beginning of his tenure. And I'm not sure at the end of the day how good of an actual AD Dave was, right? As a human being, great dude. Great dude. And, and and that's one of my biggest regrets. We've talked about it, that I've got to know him a little better through you and whatever. And it's like, okay, he's he means well in everything he does. No one says a bad word about Dave as a person, right? And so that's why, like, when I called Mike, like I, I was upsetting. Like it's upsetting to see nice people lose their jobs, and and, and so it, and now it's going to be upsetting because the PR campaign's already started, and this dude's a nice guy with family and kids, and, and Robbins is going to bury him through the media. This is a shame. It's a shame. Like it's it's okay to fire him. It's fine if that's really what you want to do. Absolutely fine. But I agree with you, Jason. The the PR smearing and trying like listen the the person that was in charge of the financial miscalculation she's not even fired yet she just got repositioned that's right. bullshit right. like and she, that's a 240 million dollar downfall like right. what are we talking about here I, I i'm i'm very frustrated obviously i feel like i represent most of the fan base in terms of like yeah not everybody was on board with dave hickey and after fish left there was people clamoring for him to get fired too but i listen i think he rebounded miraculously in this last week how he kept everything together and we and, and we rebounded and after the high that was on Saturday of, right. you know, the comeback win, the football players coming back, Benedict Matherin and TJ in the house, like, I, that was like single the, the single best day as a Wildcat that I could ever remember. And then you follow it up on a Monday by just shitting on everybody. I just do not like He could have waited until the end of the week at least. And see, that's the thing to me that really gets really gets me is I hate when these things happen and then you go into uh, you go into management, you go into basically, I'm gonna throw somebody else under the bus. We all know who Brett McMurphy's source is, like you said. And so this is uh, and again, this <sighs> Like I said, it's it, it's kind of because I like when you and I were talking about this last week, I just didn't think it was going to happen this like this soon. But man, I mean, again, you don't. And, and well, all right, let me ask you this: What kind of at what point then is it malfeasance by Robbins to say, okay, well, I am going to fire you, I am going to do this, but guess what? I'm going to put you in charge of the next football coach hire just to save my ass. I don't. Uh, I'm sorry, man. This is it's mind boggling. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I, I am, I am, I don't think from what I understand, I'm talking to people. That's why my phone's going off. I think Dave knew yesterday is basically when he found out and they crafted this and Mike, what time is it? It's five o'clock it's the end of the business day. So they waited to the end of the business day to make this happen. Um, yeah. And honestly, like, I know we don't want to talk about replacements, but I think the replacements obvious in terms of boosters and 
Kendra and all that. My guess is that it's, it, I would assume it's going to be Erica Barnes. Well, then I why mean, would you put Erica Barnes in charge as the interim then? I don't know. Maybe to, to make it look, I don't know. But, but I've had multiple people reach out telling me that their guess is it's, it's, it's going to be Erica. It's not done. Because if you're Robbins, you can't do a search and pay an AD a million dollars a year. No, nope, you sure you can't. <laughs> so Erica's easy. You just promote her, pay her a little bit more money. She's a U of A person, and and she knows Brennan. You're good. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, she has great relationships with the boosters. Um, she's an easy person to like. She's mm -hmm. she's at every single event. She's personable. She'll talk to everybody. Like I I would agree with you, Jason. Like that should be the next hire. Uh, she was also in the running back when Hiki got the job. Um, now she might've been a distant, you know, second or third, but she was in the running. She did get interviewed for the position and then they opted to go with Hiki. So if you're going to rebound at all, you, you would think that this has to be the next hire. Otherwise the financial thing makes no sense. Cause you are going to have to pay, you know, a lot of money to find a quality AD to come into this, to this athletic department. You got to do a search firm. You got to Like it's, you're, you're just spending more money to save money. So it just. And Erica cares about sports and all that. I don't, I'm just saying, like, we could bring back Greg Byrne. Here's <laughs> Saul's guy. So here, here, here's, I guess here's my question, though. And it's always been kind of I, I, not a joke because Erica Barnes, like you said, Saul, is a very likable person, very qualified, the utmost. So, again, all of that. But it's always been kind of a, you know, around the athletic department. Well, it's uh, uh, the joke is it's Robin's making the hire and then Hickey's kind of around. You never really heard Erica wasn't really involved in big time hiring decisions i guess that's the other thing that kind of surprises me a little bit and i think at the end of the day you got to realize that if robbins is always going to make the hire bring in the person that could bring in money and there's no doubt that erica could fundraise her relationships with everyone robbins is making the hire no matter who the ad is so at least with erica like jeff stevens has been gone for a while if erica gets hired i guarantee you jeff stevens is back guarantee it and, and so you know there's there's a way to salvage this and that's probably hiring erica barnes i just don't see how arizona goes and hires some associate ad at another school for a million dollars a year and sells that as the right decision yeah and also like just the the nuance of arizona you know it, there's so much so there's so many levels that we as we've seen this last week that you have to know about when it comes to u of a and erica knows better than anybody in terms of the nuance of the University of Arizona. So I, I agree. I, I would say this, I was prepared to come on here as I was thinking about who would be the next person. That's who, exactly who I would have gone out, uh, gone after. I think she's tr a tremendous person. And, and like you said, uh, the fundraising aspect of this cannot be overlooked because especially with right. the financial downfall that this university has, you better find somebody that can bring in a lot of money on the outside. So that's the one I would go with. Yeah, my question also is, is why why should Robbins get it again? I'm just spitballing right here. Why should Robbins get another hire? Why should Robbins? I mean, if we're in this and you're firing, you're hiring people, why should Robbins get another hire, period? He shouldn't, but he's still the president of the school. <laughs> and until the Abor, that, that, at the end of the day, look, like the other day, last week, it was completely ignored. The Senate faculty and the union, the, the union had demanded his resignation. No one paid attention to it. I think the star is the only one that paid attention to it because of all the coaching stuff, everything going on. Like at the end of the day, Robbins is smart. He made friends with the board of regents and those are the ones that are going to decide his future. And until they change their mind, he's the president and he's going to go in front of them and say, Dave Hickey did this, this, and this. We got rid of them. That's how we're fixing it. We audited. That's how we're fixing it. We're going to hire so-and-so. So what about the rest of the university? They're auditing everything. People are going to, I'm telling you, Mike, I know, but I'm telling you, I'm not saying I agree with him. He's a moron, but he's going to fire. Dave is not the first one. There's going to be heads of departments all over that are going to be right. fired here in the next two This weeks. is a bad example because Saul Bookman has a crack staff on the uh, under him. <laughs> I can attest. But uh, let's just say that, let's just say that Saul's boss, let's just say Saul's boss comes to him and says, everybody under you is drastically underperforming expectations. It's all going wild. And Saul's like, well, you know what? I'm just going to, um, all the people that I hired, let them do their job. I'm just going to get rid of all of them. Don't worry about me, and I'll make the new hires. It, I mean, obviously, that's not the – it just doesn't make any sense. It's all booking. No comment. 
<laughs> this uh, is very Mike, we have to talk tomorrow. I didn't tell you that before. No, hey, yeah, listen, right. I, I agree. You you can't. I don't know, man. Like, listen, I, I don't know what Robin's relationships are with 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 people on the board and and the board of regions and stuff. But I, I apparently it's good. And I I will say this, man. I, I really hate going this way <laughs> because we've seen other presidents at other schools, <clears throat> mainly in this city, uh, that really don't know. Uh, they're ass from a hole in the head. Right. And so you got to be careful with the devil that you dance with. Right. And I, I know this is, this does not look good for Robbins and the university, but at the end of the day, if they can recover by hiring a, a, an Erica Barnes, you can kind of let it slide and, and be about your day. All right. I'm real talking quick. To, I'm talking to, or we have a mutual booster buddy. I'm, I'm talking to a couple yeah. of them. It, they think it's all leading to what we said earlier. One way or another, this is leading to Robbins. It's just a matter of how it's going to get there on the way. You know what? I think that same buddy just messaged me the same thing because I got that exact same text message. So, um, Sorry, all right. I'm not cool. Why not make guys? Humberto yeah. the AD? You know? Yeah. Humberto be the AD. By the way, I, I've been trying to reach out to him to get him on the show. I would love to get him on the he show. can't hear you underneath all his money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> By the way, everybody asking about the hat. I can't find the hat. And yeah. listen, the real reason why we did the emergency pod. We did the emergency hat podcast to find the hat. The find the hat movement is, but again, I have no clue where it is. I have, uh, but all right. Well, so let's just go under the premise then that it's Erica Barnes. Your date stole it. Well, I actually know it was gone before then. Um, but uh, let's say that uh, let's say it's Erica Barnes. Um, what I guess so then, and because this is going to be the next question. With football, with basketball, I would assume that everything is okay from a head coaching perspective because, again, uh, Brent Brennan is not going anywhere. These players are back. And on top of that, with the basketball team, um, obviously, uh, Tommy Lloyd's got a good thing going. So a lot of people you know, that, are, uh, that would be worried about that, I wouldn't worry about it from a basketball or a football perspective, fellas. No, I, I mean, look, I, I – I can't see Brett Brennan changing his mind about wanting to coach Arizona because of the AD. Right. It just, you know, he was at no offense to San Jose State, but no matter who the AD is, Arizona's going to have more resources and all of that than they did at San Jose State. Basketball, Tommy Lloyd, I don't know. You know, I, I never, it, it never struck me as Tommy and Dave being that close. I think Tommy's just kind of a, a businessman type of deal. Like I'm the head coach of Arizona basketball, and, and that's that. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, and you got to remember also, Brennan, was was at the school while Candrea was there, while Erica Barnes was also there. Like they they had to have crossed paths several times, especially Candrea. Um, so I'm sure the familiarity with with Erica and the coaches, uh, in addition to Candrea now as the interim and the coaches is is probably pretty familiar. So I don't think Brendan would feel unnerved. At least he has a familiar face that he can go and talk to. Now let me ask you this: Ray Anderson, he's available. Dude, Jesus Christ! We should come up with an AD hot board. I see you in the background, Eric. (laughs) Ray Anderson, though, we should come up with an AD hot board, though. That would be. uh, I haven't done that, and I I tell you, the last time I did that, Dave Hickey was nowhere to be found on my hot board. Yeah, it just it's too bad too because listen, I mean at the end of the day, listen, if there was financial malfeasance, I get it. You got to do what you got to do. Um, but his last three, I mean, listen, uh Jed Fish was an awesome hire. I mean, we don't I don't like how Jed Fish left, but Jed Fish did a great job. Now you could say that Robbins hired Jed Fish, fine. Um then uh Tommy Lloyd, that was Dave Dave was far more involved with that than many people know. Dave Hickey was very has known a lot of people that were very close with him growing up. That was a Dave Hickey hire, and this was a uh, this Brent Brennan thing was a Dave Hickey hire. This save right here was a Dave Hickey hire. I and you know and again, Sheer and I make fun of each other all the time. And no, Kevin O'Neill's not. I mean, Kevin O'Neill is available, but um, the uh, oh, a super snap. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, seven dollars super snap from oh back the, <laughs> from Get back. A new the, hat, for back the A race, starting the hashtag get Mike Luke a new hat he, fund. We need to check on Mike because when you think about it, car stolen, hat missing, day <laughs> fired. Like, I don't want to even go near you, Mike. I don't know what to really do at this point. I'm kind of, yeah, like this is not a this has not been overall a good time for me. Cars, I got a rental now. Oh, by the way, Saul Bookman, when you think Mike Luke, when you think of cool vehicles, 
What do you think that Mike Luke's driving right now? <laughs> You're probably driving a 1987 Yugo. Nope, 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 my friend. A Chrysler 300. <laughs> 2023. <laughs> that's why let's let's be real that's why you're getting robbed <laughs> yeah that's true that's true that's true the uh no but the kia no it was because of the kia the kia was stolen so the rental they gave me is a chrysler 300 um all right now uh anyways back to uh back to the ad hot board one name that is going to keep getting brought up that is not going to be well I don't know that he won't be hired. People are going to keep bringing him up as Mark, Mark Harlan. You're going to start getting those. Yeah. Ma- uh, Mark Harlan is not going to be hired. He's at Utah. Mark Harlan will not be hired, even with his connections at the U of A. No, no chance. Why would he All take right. this job? I'm just <laughs> saying, man. The only the only way I would say that I would actually venture to say that unless you're a small school AD, no standing AD will be Arizona's new athletic director. Why would you? Right. For sure. So again, Poach Harlan, I told you it was already going to come up. You know who else is at Utah? Oh, Dorian Singer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this again, this is just, we can't have nice things, but like you guys said, as much, this is a little personal for me because I really like Dave a great deal. Um, but if uh, if Erica Barnes is hired, she can bring the fundraising back. She can get, you know, she can, like you saw said, you know, stabilize things financially. Then, you know, you understand what they got to do. I just hate good people. The boosters are 100% going to push for Erica. All right. I know that for a fact that Erica, in terms of booster money, and you want more money, and Brett and Brennan, I bet you, is probably going to say, I'm cool with Erica. Even Kondrea. I wouldn't be shocked if he's just the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I think, again, I have a personal relationship with Erica. I've known her for since I was down there at school in 2015. Uh, she's one of those individuals, and I think this is why she can relate to everybody. She's one of those individuals that when she sees you, she just makes you feel like, hey, what's going on? You know, she makes you feel like you're part of the family, part of the U of A family. That's what boosters love. That's what fans love. That's what, you know, uh, the alums love. So uh, you can't go wrong with her. Also, she she learned uh, under burn, whether you like that or not. She also learned under Hiki, whether you like that or not. Um, I, and, and for lack of a better word, she, she learned under two quality ADs, whether you like them or not, right. they, they produce results. Um, and some things were bad. Yes, we know, but there was a lot of other things that were good. And, um, you know, Dave or Greg Byrne is obviously doing this thing at Alabama and you can't slouch at that. Right. And then, you know, and who knows where Dave Hickey's going to land next. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine he's going to be out of work long because of, of his experience and his track record on what he did here, because yeah. even if Robbins had a hand in it, how right. can he prove that he's, he's, he's going to, he's going to lay claim to a lot of the stuff that he did here. And one thing you did, one thing you said too, that, you know, obviously amongst all the things that Saul Bookman said that were right. Um, but you don't find, you don't come across anybody that doesn't like Erica Barnes. You don't come across somebody that's like, dude, screw it. I mean, she doesn't know what she's talking about. There's, you don't really find those people. And if you do, it's like with Mick Cronin with Justin Spears, that is a Mick Cronin problem. So I'm looking, I, you need to talk about this in a minute. But go I'm, ahead. Still, I'm still convinced that he thought it was Jason Shear. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how do you like you've known Spears forever. Like, you like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? He, I called him afterwards. I was like, bro, what did you do to Mick Crony? He was like, that's the first time I've ever he talked to him. I have no idea. The only thing I could think of, Saul, is that remember the whole Hap Cronin thing and Justin chased it a little bit. Uh, I wonder if we got back to Mick that it was Justin chasing it a little bit. You might be right about that. I forgot all about that. Yeah, but even then, it's like who cares? Who cares? It's like grow up, dude. Are right. you surprised that Mick Cronin would hold a grudge for that long? I mean, Jesus, he probably remembers the third grade kid that stole his lunch. No, there is one name. There is one name, and your boy Greg Hanson is tweeting about it, and he is right. I don't think he would take the job. Mac Rhodes, you have to make the call to Mac Rhodes and have him say no. Yeah, I know. I know. I saw that. Um, back to Justin for a second, because that's actually makes me smile. Tell, tell the people, Mike, where Mac Rhodes is from, because a lot right. of people might not know who he is. Baylor. There you Baylor. go. Rincon, too. Rincon High. Rincon Tucson High Dallas. School, Baylor. Yeah. So, again, he's done a pretty good job. Oh, hey, by the way, this is actually, this is very funny. Um, the, uh, where is it? Um, hold on. There was a Saul. Oh, is Saul the, oh, this is great. Is Saul the reason that Ballo was seven for eight from the line last game? <laughs> Saul Bookman, gonna, did you have something to do with this? I'm going to leave the show right now. If you bring up free throws anymore, 
ever again with me on here. <laughs> okay. Makes right, a good enough. point, though. Makes a good point. I do. I do make a good point. Real quick, back to Spears, and then we'll get back to the AD. <laughs> so I called Spears yesterday, and I said, listen, you got to take that audio and do something with it because they have the best on Spears and Ali. They have the best intro that you will ever hear, where it's uh, Charles Barkley talking about Justin and then Barkley saying, well, I would never compare myself to Ali, obviously referring to Muhammad Ali, not Ali Farhang. But either way, it's great. They got to get something in there with Mick Cronin as well. Here's my thing. If you dislike Justin Spears, you are the first person in the world that dislikes Justin Spears, and you suck. Mick Cronin, you suck. <laughs> Nobody dislikes Spears. <laughs> Sheer and I spent like 20 minutes talking about this. Do you know anybody that dislikes Justin Spears? I don't. They don't nope. exist. The only, the only, the only things that hate Justin Spears are the the tendies over at uh, what's that place called they love so much? The chicken tenders. Oh, um, Canes, Canes, right. yeah. <laughs> yes. You can quiver when they see him come around. Yeah, oh, right for sure. So, um, yes, Mac Rhodes will definitely be somebody that you uh, you make a phone call to, see if he's interested. But um, the oh, uh, so man, I'm getting I'm hearing too, Mike. You're not that uh, you're interesting. Uh, multiple people are texting me. Humberto is not a Dave fan. This may have been speared by Humberto a little bit. Mm. Well, remember the whole the Jetfish, like I think the Jetfish thing pissed off a lot of people. Jet, and that's not because Jed left. It's how Jed left. It's who Jed talked to. It's the warning. It's it's everything. Man, have you? Do, can you ever recall a coach leaving a program and trying to just? tear it all down quite the way Jed Fish has done. Like there is some ramifications that are going to be happening because of this that have exactly. already happened. And what, what really bothers me about the whole Jed Fish thing, and again, I've said this a million times, I don't care that you take a, a job where you're making a lot more money. Cool. Totally get it. But at the same time, though, you also, this was a school that took a chance on you. Nobody was beating down the door. George rushing for AD is cracking me up each time somebody puts that in. But the um, nobody was beating down the door to get Jed Fish. They showed you a, uh, they gave you, you know, they gave you a spot that nobody else was really giving you. So I got to give them, I, I, you know, that bothers me. And then the agent calling with a bunch of nonsense, that's annoying as well. Um, I, you know, like I said, I'm all over the place cause this, this one hurts because I really like Dave a great deal. So, um, sheer, go ahead. Saul, go ahead. I'm a mess. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. I know how much you, you love yourself some Dave. Uh, Hey, listen, and, and I, he's a great guy. Uh, he's always been personable. Um, you know, I, I texted him the other day just to say congrats on, you know, rebounding from this. And he, and he took the time to, to, to text back and say, Hey, I appreciate the the love and, you know, bear down. And so, you know, we wish him the best. Sure. It, it's unfortunate that it went down like this, but Jason seems like he has something to say. Abor just scheduled an emergency meeting yep. for two things. You're going to laugh. So this is why this goes back to Jed too. Okay. This emergency meeting is to accept Brent Brennan's contract to pass it. Remember the meeting was not scheduled. Okay. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Tommy Lloyd assigned an extension. <laughs> God, dude. No way. No Tommy way. Lloyd an extension through 2028. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? This, this whole, this whole thing is. Kenny Dillingham thing. got an extension too. <laughs> emergency pot eric oh. <laughs> oh there you go oh they got um, the whole, if you go to the border region site guys you can see yeah dilly dilly yeah. dilly got a uh you know what wait let's talk about dilly for a second here and i don't want everybody we're at 780 tell your people to get in here man um i like dilly i like dilly a great deal dilly's a good dude dilly's Sheer getting paid. what's that dilly's getting paid you should get paid tell them what dilly did for you this is a very cool story I did, didn't I? NAU also is hiring their football coach. So, but the, the whole Jedfish emergency meeting thing is just not correct. Uh, my dad had heart issues and went to the hospital, and it was pretty scary for a bit. And Dillingham actually texted me and uh, wished him the best, and it was uh, very nice. Did not have to do that. Uh, it was very, very cool. I, I will say that there are not a lot of ASU people that I'm a big fan of, uh, mostly the fans and the players for the most part, but Kenny Dillingham is a solid to, you know, solid to earth dude. Very much so. And Doug Tamaro, those two guys. Oh, love love him. Doug. 
Doug's the best. Doug is the best SID in the country, and he got an award for it. So, and bunch he, of props to him. And you know what? That's you're all the ASU love we can handle. You're not going to find anybody, honestly, in the state that doesn't believe that about Doug. Is Doug's that dude? Doug is uh, Doug's just that guy. Um, all right. So now, as far as this is interesting about the ABOR, because keep in mind they've never scheduled an emergency meeting in January ever, ever. Yeah, that's wild. They've never scheduled one. So. Um, that's uh I guess that's where we're uh, I guess that's where we're at with this one. Now, um as far as a uh <laughs> Oh, you're that... going to like this actually. I'm wrong. Dude, I love Abor. They withdrew the uh the Tommy Lloyd thing. So, it was originally on it and they withdrew it probably because of this. So, Tommy Lloyd agreed to the contract extension. They're no longer hearing it at the meeting. They'll probably come at some other point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, it will. Bad PR there. Did he hire someone that Bobby was against? No, he was actually allowed to hire Brent Brennan. Yeah. Uh, that's just where, yeah, whatever. Um, did, Dilly, did Dilly's extension was just the one year, right? Yeah. The one, the, the one because if they uh, let go of the AD or something like that, he was supposed to get the extension or something, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the oh, way. The bowl band. The, people... the bowl band. The bowl band. Right. That's right. All right. By the way, as much as yeah, 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 yeah. All right. By the way, um, with the uh, the oh, ABOR, I uh, Irish Mike, I think you're giving the ABOR way too much credit. I don't think they even know what Tommy Lloyd's tournament record is. Um, the uh, this is one of those things you try to hire. You try to look, listen. It's been disappointing. Come March, totally get it. You want Tommy Lloyd here as long as he wants to be here with the way he's recruiting, the way that he understands people, the way that he's coaching. You absolutely want Tommy Lloyd here as long as possible. I'm actually, I know the optics aren't bad, but I would 1000% want Tommy Lloyd. I would tell Tommy Lloyd, uh, Tommy Lloyd, you will be here the rest of your life and you will have no other say about it. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, we're all Tommy Gunn fans here, man. Yeah, we are Tommy Gunn fans. By the way, he's Saul Bookman. Yes. Nickname for you. So we got the Tommy gun. Mm -hmm. Brent, Brent Brennan, the BB gun. The BB gun. I like it. I like it. I, I like I it. It's pretty, I think it's pretty good. Shout out Kenny Abbey. I can't take credit for that. Although I did think I was taking credit for it. All right. The the ABOR, um, this will be, I guess this will be the save of the century if Robbins is able to keep his job as well. But I don't know. At this point, who knows with the kind of connections that you have. Just the whole thing is very, very disappointing. Jervis, what do you mean cut it out? Mike, cut it out. I think I'm doing right. Um, I don't know. Uh, all right. Don't encourage him, Saul. Oh, they don't want me. Mike, uh, I'm begging, please. <laughs> okay, either way. Um, all right, now. <laughs> All right, so moving forward then, as far as the time frame, I would imagine they're going to try to make this higher sooner than later for a variety of reasons that you mentioned as well. Um, is Robin still interviewing with Stanford? No. Um, the uh, I would imagine they're going to try to make this AD higher, though, as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, what what's the rush, though? That's true. That's what's true. the rush? You're a hired football coach. Everybody yeah. else is kind of in place right now until the at least the end of the academic year. There's really no rush to get get a new co uh, new AD in here unless you're Robbins and you think that this hire is going to be able to save you somehow, some way. Which I don't, I don't care who he hires. I doubt that that's going to be the deciding factor on whether or not he loses his job as president of the un university. So there's no rush, to be honest. Yeah, sure. What say you? I don't. I agree with Saul. I, there's no rush at this point. I, I would actually say the opposite. I bet you Kendra is the interim for a little bit to quiet things down. And then all of a sudden you're going to see a promotion or a hire. Probably, I would even say like this spring, this summer. I, I don't think there's a rush at all. All right. All right. Because they're going to, they're going to, they're going to say that they're going to, here's what's going to happen. Robbins is going to say that he's like retooling the athletic department. Dave's not going to be the only one to go. I'm almost worried that he's going to get rid of Erica too, but I don't, I don't think he's that stupid. Oh man. If he does that, Oh shit! I, yeah. There is going to be a lot of upset and uh, people in Tucson for sure. Like, who's who's uh, Dave's right hand man? What's uh, I forget the name. Oh, um, uh, 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 um, Kia Kowski. No, no, the oh, hold on, I'm gonna look it up. It's, it's bothering me. It's uh, hold on, I got it right here. I'm very quick with the Google machine. Yeah, Theo. Uh, Blaylock. I wonder about Blaylock. 
You think Matthew Greg Hayes is still here from Greg, from Greg to lose a job over this? Matthew Hayes is still here from Jed Fish, and he's in the AD. Why? <laughs> like, like he he. It, but because admin, he's going to Seattle. Like he's going to UW. But they got to get his contract off the books somehow. Like there's there's things they have to do now. Yes. By the way, uh, yes, Big Jonas Sabanea is coming back. They did put that out there. Him and Wendell Moy. We hit that on the show today. That means you didn't watch the show this morning, <laughs> TLN. You put that out there. Come on, TLN. We talked about that. All right. Um. All right. Like I said, we'll know. We'll we'll know a lot more tomorrow. But this is obviously the financial audit of the athletic department's probably not going to look good. I do think that they're going to be putting their attack dogs out. Um. But listen, at the end of the day, if Dave mismanaged stuff, I get that it's a results-oriented business. I totally understand that. I am just not a fan of uh, kicking people on the way out. I'm also not a fan of, if you know you're going to fire somebody, allowing them to hire the next football coach and then firing him. That's all that, uh, that's where I stand with this. Call me old school. Call me old-fashioned, fellas. Listen, I in terms of basketball, to, to go from Sean Miller to Tommy Lloyd, you can't be mad at that. Uh, the rebound, listen, the Sumlin thing was a disaster. Uh, I think Dave Higgy deserved a lot of slander for that, along with Robbins. But they rebounded by getting Jed Fish, and no matter how it ended, uh, you know, he got this program back on track, so you got to give him credit for that. And there was other hires and other things that, that happened around the university as well that they had success in. Um, the tennis program had a lot of success. The golf program had a lot of success. Uh, making sure that you extended, you know, Anderson over uh, in in the golf program and stuff like that. So uh, Ionello, uh, you know, uh, uh, being in charge of the girls program, like retaining those good coaches. Like, there's a lot of other levels to this outside of just the 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 two big sports. Um, but you know, you hate to see Dave Hickey lose his job. I wish him the best of luck. I hope he lands on his feet somewhere. I'm sure he will. And uh, look forward to whoever's going to come in here next. That's all yeah. we can do. Yeah. All right, Saul Bookman, what do you guys have going on? Anything new? Or I was just, uh... we just got our sun show here in about 45 minutes. Yeah, Hopefully they can win six calm, Look how calm Saul is. must be nice. You know, <laughs> he's got a Suns game. We're over here. Mike and I are thinking, what are we going to eat for dinner? Boom, AD fired. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just, yeah. All right, where can they By the way, while we were on this show, it leaked. Because everything leaks. Uh, Zoe Carter is official. He is Alonzo here. Carter is official. That is a very, very nice hire. Running backs coach. Um, and again, we're going to have, well, sure, you're coming on tomorrow. But we're also still going to have, uh, we're still going to keep eye on some football. Because we want to talk good things as well. Speedy Luke's Pops is coming on. We'll talk some Zoe Carter. And we'll talk more Arizona athletics. But Saul Bookman, you're going to be up in 45 minutes. This is correct. Yes, yes. Let's All go right. for six in a row, sons. Let's go. <laughs> All right. For the boss, the big dog, the man in the chair. One guy said he looks like Jesus in that chair. I don't disagree. Saul Jesus Bookman. Jesus Christ, what are we doing? You just said Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. But for Saul Bookman, Jason Shear, I am Mike Luke. We'll be back with you. We're going to get through. Nothing is ever boring with Arizona athletics. We appreciate it. We got up to 780. You guys are, sa you guys are fantastic. We will talk with you tomorrow. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.